Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you are an Unreal Engine developer, today is a day of much rejoicing. The long-awaited Unreal Engine 4.21 is now amongst us. Now it's been a couple of preview releases to this point in time, but this is the full-blown, ready-to-be-used, in-production environment, except for all the bits that aren't, as you will see in just a few seconds. I'm finding both Unreal Engine and Unity are doing a lot of preview releases or experimental releases alongside their full release, but personally I think this is kind of cool, to be honest. Now another thing you're going to find with the Unreal Engine 4.21 is this is 100% Unreal Engine Fortnite Edition. I would say about 65% of the functionality in here was derived from the development of the mobile titles of Fortnite. Not that that was a bad thing. I just basically, uh, the uh, mobile portions of Unreal Engine have now been dogfooded and battle tested and have gotten improvements as a result, as we will see. So today we're going to jump into the release notes. Obviously, I will toss all the links down below like I always do. So let's take a look at what exactly is new in this release. Now, this isn't actually the biggest release we've seen in a long time, but it is a pretty good release. All of these major point releases normally have quite a bit of stuff in them. This one's got a lot of improvements to Niagara. Now, Niagara is their new particle cinematic system. So basically, you can create very complex and convoluted particle systems using Unreal Engine now. We'll actually go hands-on with that in just a few moments. But uh, Nintendo Switch now supports Niagara particle systems, so I suppose that's good. Uh, GPU texture, GPU only texture sampling in Niagara. Niagara skeletal mesh data interface improvements, ribbon particle improvements, GPU simulation support in Niagara, simplified systems and emitter creation. This is definitely what we are going to check out in a second, which is kind of cool. It's a lot easier to make a Niagara particle system now. Uh, pendulum constraint. Uh, module additions and improvements. I'm not going to go into all of those, but uh, you can see there's a new module and options there. Uh, the new replication graph. This is actually kind of cool for large scale games. Uh, so what they've done is improve the way that CPU server performance works when synchronizing a bunch of network actors. So what they're saying, for example, is in, and here's the theme, Fortnite Battle Royale starts with 100 players with roughly 50,000 replicated actors, which would kick the living crap out of a server. So what they've done here solves this problem by offering an alternate strategy geared specifically for high volume multiplayer games. This works by assigning actors to replication nodes which store pre-calculated information that clients can use to retrieve lists of actors that need to be updated, saving the CPU of recalculating the same data for many clients on every frame. In addition to the standard nodes that ship with the engine, the developer can write their own nodes to fit the specific needs of actors within games. So basically it is a way for um, kind of a form of caching, if you will, for multiplayer games, large multiplayer games. Uh, new optimizations for shipping on mobile because of, hey, Fortnite. Um, mobile development process got easier thanks to all the mobile applications that were developed for Fortnite's initial release on Android, in addition to all the iOS improvements from our upgoing, ongoing updates. That includes improved Vulkan support on Android, uh, config rules for Android, uh, program binary cache for Android, uh, uniform, uh, I'm sorry, emulated uniform buffers on Android, CPU affinity control on Android. Now, this is some kind of geeky low level stuff, but it's kind of the kind of things that they ran into while developing Fortnite that proved to be a problem and they've solved them. And now 4.21, Android developers using Unreal Engine are reaping those benefits. Improved GPU particle simulation performance on mobile, dithered LOD transitions, dithered LOD transition options, uh, new cooker performance. The cooking process has been optimized to result up to 60% reduction in cook times. This is nice. This is one of those areas where I find using Unreal Engine excruciatingly painful in its building of shaders, cooking of lights, and um, build times for mobile in general. They're all extremely painful. So any improvements there are definitely improvements Unreal Engine could use. Now, the, this one is really kind of interesting. It came from left field, and this is early access, obviously, so this is not a production-ready feature. But now you can do pixel streaming. So it's a run a packaged Unreal Engine application on a desktop PC in the cloud. So basically, they are building... Like NVIDIA Shield Shadow Player, whatever they called, or Chromecast equivalent for Unreal Engine games where you can stream directly to any modern web browser on any platform. So you can um, stream directly to the web browser from Unreal Engine, uh, a viewport rendered by Unreal Engine embedded within a web UI. So you can do web streaming to browsers from Unreal Engine. So I think this is mostly all about this one. You can broadcast a single session to multiple viewers by simply sharing a link. So they're building... Twitch into Unreal Engine essentially so you can have the website or your own website directly pulling from your game. It's kind of cool support actually there and it's amazing how much the, this browser streaming technology we're getting just across the board lately. Uh, animation system optimizations and improvements including animation compression upgrade uh, updates. Animation compression times are significantly reduced. Animation notify um, improvements. 
maintain original scale of root motion, add caching and autocomplete for sync marker names, animation sequence frame rate, uh, enable auto blend out on animation montages, CC dick skeletal control node, no idea what that is, set master pose component force update, uh, new gauntlet automation framework. This one's actually kind of cool too. This is a testing uh, framework. Again, this really does seem like something that came out of dog fooding. Uh, the new early access gauntlet automation framework enables you to automate the process of deploying builds to devices, uh, running one or more clients and servers, and processing the results. You can create gauntlet scripts that automatically profile points of interest, validate game logic, and return the values from the API. So basically, if you're testing a, a game across multiple different devices under multiple different scenarios, you can use gauntlet scripts to... Um, kind of automate that process for you. So it's uh, it's going to give you testing details out of the results. Uh, each gauntlet test is a C-sharp script that expresses a simple config for your test, how many clients, how many servers, what parameters to pass. Gauntlet takes care of allocating machines from a pool, deploying and running builds, checking for common errors such as crashes or search of timeout, and collecting log files and other artifacts. I guess when you're developing a 100-plus person game and you need to deploy to 100-plus people to test, automating it is kind of a nice thing to do, which seems to be what they've done with Gauntlet. Now, it's interesting they went with C-sharp script. Like, why won't you just script this thing with blueprints? Uh, you know, this is the only C-sharp usage in the entire engine, as far as I know. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, anyways, we got a submix envelope follower. Um, it's an improvement to the Unreal Audio Engine. You can now set env uh, envelope follower delegate on their submixes, allowing amplitude analysis of individual channels for that submix. Uh, this will help users power visualizations and blueprint events based on amplitude characteristics of their submixed audio. Uh, new filtered sound submix effects, uh, sound submix effects reverb by dry level, optimizations to source effect API, uh, Linux defaults to the Vulkan renderer now, Linux media player, you can now use the bundled uh, WebM media plugin to play back um, VPX 8 and 9 videos on the Linux platform, Linux Clash report client GUI, professional video IO uh, improvements, early access here. Um, Make it easier to get video feeds into and out of Unreal Editor over professional quality SDI video cards. Uh, da, 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 da. I think we're getting near the end. Yeah, this one's strange. New geographically accurate sun positioning, if for some reason you want that. Um, we've got new static mesh processing, blueprint usability improvements, uh, improvements to the HTML5 template, HTML5 feed readme update, improved IPv6 uh, support, uh, improved deni uh, distributed denial of service detection and mitigation, mitigation uh, physics interface updates, pipeline support object caching, physics light unit updates, sequencer event track, um, geometry tr uh, cache track experimental, sequencer audio bake down, sequencer guide marks, uh, new Windows Mixed Reality support, which is actually kind of sweet because that's actually what I use as opposed to uh, having to go through Steam VR. So that's cool if you've got a Windows Mixed VR headset. Uh, Magic Leap developer support, uh, Oculus avatars, round robin occlusion, and a whole bunch of platform upgrades as you would expect to the various different newest and greatest versions. And that is about it. So now let's just quickly talk about how you actually deploy Unreal Engine. And this one's super simple. Load up the Unreal Engine launcher, go to library, go to uh, engine versions, click plus, and then pick the version that you want. Now in this case, obviously I don't need this guy because I've already got 4.2 uh, one installed, but everything is done via the Unreal Engine launcher. And uh, once you've got it up and going, let's do a quick, take a quick look at the user interface for Niagara. Probably the, the marquee feature here, this is that new advanced particle system. Well, you a couple things to be aware of. Now, first off, you need to actually enable it. So if you're coming in here going, okay, well, where is it? It's nowhere. You need to actually turn it on. Go into edit, go to plugins, locate FX on the built-in side of things, and then turn on Niagara. And you've also got integration with Houdini, uh, a graphics uh, simulation or a, a graphics creation app like Mox and Maya that is all about procedural programming. Uh, and then we've got the extras as well. I'm not 100% sure what's in there, but I turned it on anyways. So you can too. Now, do note that once you turn this on, you are going to have to restart Unreal Engine for it to be available. But once you have done that, you can come down here to your content browser, say add new, and then predictably enough, you go to effects, and then you go to Niagara system. And then here is that new dialogue they were talking about. It makes it a lot easier to get started using Niagara. So say we want either a radial burst or directional burst or a simple explosion. Those are the three options we've got here. We'll go ahead and create a directional burst. And it creates it like so. That is our new particle system. Open it up and you can see it in the new Niagara editor. Now, I'm not going to get into the um, even the basics of dealing with Niagara because it is, 
Well, it's quite complicated and it's well beyond the scope of this actual video. But just so you want to know, if you want to get in and start playing with this new particle system that is built in, I figured I would walk you through the process of actually getting to it because it's not immediately obvious that you need to turn it on or where it is or how you create your system. But nice thanks to those new wizards that make creating the particle systems a lot easier to start with, you can at least get to this point a lot faster. And then now you can start getting into some pretty insane levels of detail with your particle system, as you can see right here. And, then we can see, and this is where it gets really kind of cool, is you can get into event handlers for your particle systems. Um, so you can really get into the fine level of detail controlling how these particle systems work and interact with your scene. So Niagara will enable a whole lot more powerful particle system effects, and now it's coming to more platforms. As I mentioned earlier, it's now on Nintendo Switch. So that is definitely a positive development. So that is the new Niagara system. That is Unreal Engine 4.2.1. And as always, I will toss all the appropriate links down below. Are you an Unreal Engine developer? Are you excited about this release? Now you can really tell, as I mentioned when I started out, that a lot of what shaped 4.2.1 was their development of Fortnite. I got a feeling a lot of the Unreal Engine team was kind of temporarily seconded over to the Fortnite team. And that ended up driving the future development of Unreal Engine. But I don't really view this as a bad thing. Now, obviously, if you are not working on a mobile title or a network title, th those benefits are a lot less to you, but still, dogfooding your game engine is almost always a good idea. I actually wouldn't mind seeing Unity start a game project, too, that would drive forward their game engine development. Hell, they got enough developers, they might as well. So anyways, that is Unreal Engine 4.2.1. Are you excited by it? What do you think? Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.